Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thorne. Today we're talking about the four subtypes. Every personality type can be divided into four possible subtypes. And typically you can think of the subtypes as changeable states. These subtypes, they're not permanent, they're constantly changing. And most people's moods will vary from situation to situation. So you can use the subtypes to predict how the 16 personalities will change from situation to situation, depending on how they're feeling. The subtypes are four in uh, number. That means there is a flow subtype, there is a stress subtype, there is an inspired subtype, and there is a balanced subtype. So how do you distinguish the four? The flow subtype is the assertive subtype. Those INFJs or ENFPs or ESTPs are the most confident. When you are feeling confident, when you are feeling assertive, when you're in the lead, you tend to take on the dominant qualities of your personality type. That's when you're the most yourself. When you're in flow, everything comes natural to you. You're motivated, you're engaged, you're having fun, and you believe in yourself. And you have generally high trust in what you do. We all have high days and low days. And on low days, we switch to the stress subtype. We go to stress when we are faced with challenges above our skill level, and when we're forced to do things outside our comfort zone. Sometimes life can get difficult, and that means you'll be faced with tasks outside what you enjoy to do. When you go into stress, you go into the opposite personality traits of what you're used to do. INFPs acting like ESTJs, ESTJs acting like INFPs. We become our literal opposite, or rather we try to be our opposite. The problem with the stress subtype is that the stress subtype is met with challenge above their skill level, so often they can stumble or be clumsy about this function. They struggle with using it properly and they find themselves feeling quickly drained by it. It's overwhelming or difficult. So when we are in stress we might lash out or we might uh, act in an unnerving or unbalanced manner. We might do things or say things we normally wouldn't, we'll experience stronger negative emotion and turbulence. And this can get us to be a bit fluctuating or a bit insecure. So when you're in stress, it's important to find ways to lower the challenge level and to keep the challenge manageable. There is a level of your inferior function that is completely within your comfort zone. You can handle a high degree of your inferior function and you can use it for a long time. However, you can't use it as well as you could your flow function. And so you want to learn to dose this function as much as possible and to relax expectations. Let this function come and be fair and kind to yourself and accepting of yourself when you do things that you're not that good at. Everyone has their weaknesses. Nobody is perfect. So don't expect too much from yourself. Don't expect yourself to be every single personality type at the same time perfectly. That's never going to happen. The inspired subtypes tend to show a unusual high use of their auxiliary function and to some extent their fifth function. So INFJs in this state might resemble ENFPs and ENFPs in this state might resemble INFJs. The inspired subtypes are people that are doing things that are outside their comfort zone, yet they do things that give them energy and give them motivation. When we are inspired, we tend to do and act outside our comfort zone, but we tend to act with energy and motivation. We are challenged, but we feel inspired to meet the challenge, and we find it fascinating, fun and exciting, even exhilarating. It's like being on a roller coaster. It's also a bit scary. And so it's easy to become overwhelmed in a state. When inspiration becomes too much, it can easily turn into anxiety. And often we experience these two emotions at the same time, excitement and anxiety. This is a function that's important to dose. And so you want to manage the challenge just like you want to manage the challenge of the inferior function. And you want to have fun with this function. What I've found is when you're in this state, it's best to be a bit playful, humorous and forgiving. That means allow yourself to have fun with something and don't expect too much in terms of results. Don't expect yourself to be great at it, but just let it be what it is. It's a humorous function, so it's a function that benefits from high dose of humor. Being able to laugh at yourself while you do something and being able to let go of perfectionism or being able to think positively about what you do. 
and to be, okay, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll figure it out. Often, that's the best way to solve the anxiety of this function too. If you're able to think positive, and if you're able to laugh at the situation, it's a lot easier to manage your nerves. On the other side of this subtype is the balance subtype. You could also call this the bored subtype or the autopilot. When you go too much into the tertiary function, it can feel as if you get stuck in a loop. You keep reliving the same thoughts over and over again. You keep moving in a spiral-like pattern. You're not growing or changing, but you stay calm, you stay stable. We go to the tertiary for balance, to recharge and to get energy, especially if we're introverted. Extroverts go to the tertiary because it's a repetitive cycle or a pattern for them. It's um, doing things without thinking. For the introvert, the tertiary provides relief and recharge. For the extrovert, the tertiary provides an endless source of fun and action, even if the action feels empty or unsatisfying or unfulfilling. So introverts tend to go into the tertiary because it allows them to uh, connect with and stay in touch with themselves. There are no contradictions, there is nothing to scare you, nothing to upset you. You're often avoiding something. You're avoiding something difficult or scary or unnerving. You're avoiding a new opportunity or a possibility, perhaps a new relationship or perhaps a goal or a desire or idea that you'd had, that you thought about doing. To some extent, it's okay to go into the tertiary function. After all, we all need escape sometimes. Video games, escapism, going out. There are many ways to recharge your energy and to find balance when you need to. But it's important when you are recharged and when you've gotten your balance and center back that you get back on the horse again. You need to learn to move between these states. You need to learn to move between these four subtypes. If you attach on one subtype, you develop a fixation, perhaps a fixation with balance or harmony, perhaps a fixation with constant streams of challenge and excitement, even if it makes you overwhelmed, perhaps a fixation with stress, work and challenge and demands, pressure on you that's from the outer world, a desire to per present the perfect persona, a perfect image to the world, or perhaps a fixation with your dominant function, a desire to always be the leader, to always dominate and to always be the one in charge. Even if that means you take over and you stop other people from getting that same chance. We have to learn to flow with the world and to flow with all our cognitive functions. We have to learn to move between all of them in order to stay balanced and in order to stay in a healthy dose of flow. Flow is moving with your environment and learning to find a natural way to respond to it, experience all these functions. When you're in conflict with any of these functions, that function will work against you and it's going to suck your energy and it's going to cause you problems. But when you're able to master all functions, you're going to have more fun, you're going to have more fulfilling lives. So that's the flow code. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. See you all in the next video.